All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Sorry if I'm moving in my chair a lot. When I'm in swivel chairs, I tend to move. And this one, no matter how high I put it up, in 10 minutes, I will be sitting on the floor again. So I am going to stay down here. But as you can see behind me, I decided to throw up a little screen. I kind of want this video to be almost like you're hanging out in my room with me. Nothing crazy, not going out and doing anything. Not working on my car, I'm not standing in front of my car, I'm not doing anything. I got off of work, I am tired, I just worked a 10 hour shift, but I figured today I would make a video of five reasons why you should not, not at all, buy an Infiniti G35. So, my first starting point, I already filmed this clip once but it didn't record, but my first starting point is the VQ35DE, rev up, non rev up, as long as it's not an HR, because the HR is an amazing motor. But the DE, rev up and non rev up, I think are a very weak link of the G35s. They have been rated the top 10 engine in all cars in wherever for multiple years in a row, but I think they are a very weak link of the G35. You can go full bolt on, tune, and cams and barely make. 300 wheel horsepower sure you can go big turbo or you can go pro charger and all these things but at that point you're putting another six thousand dollars into the engine to not even make 500 horsepower and yes there are people that build the build the internals you go forge pistons you get the crank balanced you build the heads you get some cams and you put a turbo on it sure you can make thousand horsepower out of these things but you're just dumping so much money into it and after it's a thousand horsepower or after it's to a certain horsepower point you no longer have a reliable vehicle and I'm kind of speaking to the audience of people that are just coming to buy their G35s which is usually a younger audience so you 16 17 year olds that are searching for your first car I would not buy a G35 as your first vehicle because of the VQ now my second point is that these cars have immense wiring issues. They just do not do good with the wiring back in the early 2000s. Your first gen sedan is 2003 to 2007, I think. Early 2007 or late 2006. But the 03, 04 were really bad with their wiring issues. And the 05, 06 are mainly things like a non-working gas gauge or uh, temperamental RPM just little things like that uh, like in my car one of my rear door speakers my rear door the window doesn't work either is getting no power I do not know why my gas gauge does not work and sometimes my odometer just resets itself like the trip so if you are looking into getting one of these, you can expect wiring issues from pretty much any year unless you go to a second gen sedan, which is an HR and completely remade everything. So it's not even the same car. Now my next point is cheaply made interiors. I'm gonna get all the comments that are like, but it's a luxury car. It, it, it's so comfortable. It, they spent so much time on it. All of the leather and the dashboards in those cars and the door cards are all shit. Let me repeat it again for you. Shit. In Italian. They are, they're just not good at all. Uh, I don't know what they did with their leather back then, but I have yet to see a G35 that has over 100,000 miles without cracked seats. Unless it's like a two-owner car. Cracked or ripped seats, door cards missing leather, it's just a thing. Uh, cracked dashes, I don't know what they were doing back then. I don't know what material it was made out of, like, quality-wise. But clearly they weren't good because most of them have trash interiors. So, my next point is the terrible radios. Uh, not necessarily the sound system, per se, because the Bose sound system in these cars is really good, but the radio. I'm, I'm going to pull up a picture for you in a second 
show you what these things sound like, but they have no Bluetooth, which many of the competitors of the same year do, so you can't complain that the car is old. And the aux cord. The aux cord, you have to run a cord through the back of the damn radio and string it through the front of your dash. It's just bullshit. For such a luxurious car, they should not have put that calculator in that car. It is, it's just not good. It does not look good. It does not feel good. It's just not bueno. So when you decide to drop the $500 that it takes to get your your uh, double DIN kit or even your single DIN kit, that's $200. Then you're going to go spend whatever you spend on a single DIN or a double DIN radio, which could cost you anywhere between you know, a $70 radio to a $300 plus dollar radio. I spent $300 on my radio and $200 on the bezel, which, if you can do math, that's $500, which is a lot of money to have simple things such as a touchscreen radio. So, they're just really not that good. So, if you didn't know, this is really bad quality. I'm sorry, I took it straight off of Google. This is said calculator that I'm talking about. and it, You can't see it, but this says Bose here, so for this car particularly, it has the Bose sound system, so I know it sounds good, but there's no aux cord. You, can, you can't see an aux port anywhere. It's behind the radio, right? And who still uses a CD player in 2022? Almost 2023. I'm sorry for all you older folks that use one, but no one uses those anymore. And there's no Bluetooth. So you have to either buy the aux cord kit and have an ugly cord sticking out the side over here all of the time or just listen to the radio all the time and uh, no one I repeat no one wants to listen to the radio I have been doing it for almost five months now while my car has been broken and I dread I dread the radio I hate it so there's a good reason not to buy the car either now, my next point is kind of specific to the sedans because for the coupes you can find everything. But the aftermarket availability of these cars is very low for you sedan boys. I would know, trust me. There's a lot of things that you can buy, but there's not a lot of things that look good comparative to the parts you can buy for the coupe, right? So, things such as wings, hoods, things like that, you just don't have as big of a variety as you do for the coupes. You look up, you go and type in your search bar, right? Here, I'll show you. We'll come here. We'll go on to Google, right? Then I'll, I'll type. We'll even look up the year of my car, 2005, Infiniti, G30, oh shit, G35, Sedan, right? We'll look up Sedan Spoiler. That's what we'll look up. Let me let me enlarge this. I guess th these are all stock ones, but even if you go into your shopping here, Coupe, right? Immediately right off the bat, Coupe says Coupe specifically, and I specifically looked up Sedan. We keep going down, coupe, that's a rear visor for a coupe, like coupe, <laughs> it, you just, you don't get the availability. Yes, there is ones, but have you found any, have you seen any on here, that look near as good as the ones for the coupes? You just don't. There's just, there's not as much. Now, if you do a, a Gen 2 sedan, right? the ones with the HR that are the same body style as the G37, you can find really nice carbon fiber duck, duckbill wings like this. But you are paying out the ass for it. It's $200, right? But like I said, you can scroll down. I'll even scroll down quite a ways. Look. Coop, 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 and one sedan. There's one out of four odds that you'll find a sedan part instead of a coop. And this is a rear bumper. It's a rear bumper valence thing. It's not even a wing like I wanted. 
it, you just you can't find it. So the availability is low. So for my sedan boys, me included, if you want to get into like big modification of aftermarket stuff without having to go crazy custom, I would get a coupe. But if it were me, I would just go with a Gen 2 sedan or even a Gen 2 coupe, which I think is just the G37. But that's what I would do. I would not buy a Gen 1 sedan or coupe over a Gen 2. With the HR, so you make more power right off the rip, there's way more aftermarket availability. They're faster, they look better, they're, they sound better. The transmissions are better because you can get them in a 7 speed, a 5 speed, those are auto, and you can get them in a 6 speed manual. So, just another point as why you should not buy a Gen 1 G35. They're just really not that good of cars. I will be 100% transparent though. I love my G35 and it did take me quite a while to find things that I really, uh, excuse me, to find things that I really disliked about this car. Uh, there are reasons, there are obvious reasons, which I named, but all in all, they are really good cars if you are looking to just get into the car scene. Like I said in my last video, I'll link it up, up above. Uh, those are five reasons you should buy a G35, so if you still, at the end of this video, if you made it this far, you still want a G35, I'll give you five reasons as to why you will want a G35 up here. So. In conclusion, they really are just good cars in general. I love my G35 and I would not go back to a Hyundai Tiburon like I had before over this car. Uh, sorry to all my Hyundai guys. I don't like them. But I just am trying to shed some light on some things that you can look forwards to without even diving too far into specifics on like the VQ and stuff uh, because there's a lot of things you have your your gallery gaskets and whatnot, but that's beside the point. All I want to know, or all I want to know, all I want to portray to you guys is that there is issues with an early 2000s Infiniti, and they are considered luxury cars, so they are very expensive to fix. So if you are looking to get yourself into one, just be prepared to open your pockets, because they are money pits. They are big money pits. <laughs> but, like I said, I really can't complain too much. Uh, my car has been a great car for me, except for the fact that I was an idiot and I blew my car up. That was not the car's fault. That was my fault. So, I just want to preface once again, these are all my opinion. I said it in my last video, but these are all my opinion. I cannot... 100% tell you what to do. My job here is just to persuade you to go the right direction. Like I said, if I were you, I would just, I'd save a little bit of extra money and go buy you a Gen 2 sedan with an HR and a six speed and be cool. And instead of buying these Gen 1s with wiring issues and the DE motor and they're way slower, they don't sound as good, they don't look as good, they don't feel as good. They're not near as luxurious. Just make the right decision. But like I said, if you still absolutely love your Gen 1 G35 sedan or coupe, I have a video for you talking about some good things about the car. So that is the end of my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you liked this style of video because it's a little bit different for me. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how good the lighting's gonna be or anything. Let me know if you liked my little screen and me searching things up for you. Um, I also do really, 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 I already said it in the beginning of this video, but I want to thank you guys so much for 500 subscribers. It is currently at 534, which I, I don't even know how to fathom it, really. Uh, I don't know how to feel about it. 
Uh, I'm very, very, very excited to see how far this channel will take me. Or I guess how far I can take this channel, I should say. I am going to continue to upload, and things are only getting better from here. My car will be fixed soon. That or I will have another car. Lots of secrets that I have behind the scenes going on that you guys do not know about yet. But if you stick around and you like these kind of videos and you like the stuff that I do, be sure to subscribe, right? Because I just looked the other day and over 95% of the people that view my videos, YouTube shorts, my regular videos, are not subscribed. The hell are you guys doing? You're watching the video. You're watching all the way through the video and you're still not interested and you don't want to subscribe. Comment down below what I should change, what you think I should do to further grab your attention and make you want to continue to come back. I am still fairly new, relatively speaking, to YouTube. I mean, I haven't even been on this channel for a full year yet. I have uploaded over 200 videos, but a lot of those are shorts as well. So I do think I'm getting better. I think I'm becoming more fluent on camera, more comfortable on camera, and my editing styles are getting a little bit better. But please, please, please comment down below and let me know what I need to change as a creator to hold your guys' attention longer. And a lot of it is probably these longer videos and me constantly talking. But I had to make a segment to thank you guys, a second segment because this is insane to me and I am extremely grateful and I really hope the channel continues to grow just remember to like and subscribe this is the end of my video peace out I hope you guys have a great rest of your night now I have a video up here waiting for you and my little icon with my face on it. you click the icon with my face on it and you can subscribe to me you click the icon with the video on it and you can see the video that is best suited to you. So I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I will see you guys in the next one.